Welcome everyone to Talent Experience Live, or as I like to always say, the greatest show on the internet. You will be hard pressed to find a better show on the entire internet at 12 p.m. Eastern on Thursday on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. My name is Tom Tate. I'll be the host of today's episode. We are doing our employee experience series this month. We did a sneak preview last week. So if you want to check out the archives, we talked all about some of the amazing content that we're going to be covering uh, this month here in November. If you're just joining us, we go live every Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. Uh, so like, share, uh, follow us on your network of choice. We love being here. We wouldn't be here if you weren't here also. So thank you so much for joining us today. We want to make sure that you never miss a beat. Uh, Talent Experience Live is proudly brought to you by the team here at Phenom. If you're unfamiliar with Phenom, our goal, our purpose, our mission is to help a billion people find the right job. That's not a typo. I didn't misspeak. It's a true billion. We are well on our way. We can't do it without our amazing community, our amazing customers, our amazing partners. Uh, so thank you so much for being a part of the audience today. We really appreciate it. And you might be thinking, how do we do that? Right? How do we help a billion people find the right job? Pretty lofty goal. We do it with our intelligent talent experience platform. Now, this platform that we build here at Phenom, it is built to help candidates find and choose the right job faster, help employees develop their skills and evolve. And that's what we're focusing on this month on Talent Experience Live. How do we help your employees evolve, develop so that we can boost engagement and boost retention? We also help recruiters become wildly productive, wildly productive, right? Crazy productive. And uh, it's all about that efficiency. It's all about that productivity. We do that with a fantastic talent CRM uh, and a bunch of amazing features that are built into that. Uh, and then we also help managers discover and build the right teams using actual data. Uh, so if you want to learn anything about this, right? If you want to dive deeper uh, into how we do this, if you want to learn more about our super slick artificial intelligence and machine learning that goes underneath the platform to help propel all of these experiences, head on over to phenom.com. We love talking about this. We love geeking out about all things talent experience. Uh, so let us know that you want to have a conversation. We would love to do that. So I want to give some quick shout outs. Uh, we got Justin Devitt here. Uh, he is behind the knobs. He's on the ones and twos. He's making things happen behind the scenes. So thank you, Justin. Uh, he'll be helping out today. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to everybody uh, who is in the audience today. Uh, why don't we do a quick icebreaker? So because today, uh, today's conversation is going to be all around learning, development, skills, uh, I always am interested in what you're learning out there, right? So if you have a new new skill uh, that you learned recently, maybe an old skill that you've leveled up recently, or, you know, 2023 is right around the corner, like this is a great time to start thinking about New Year's resolutions, thinking about uh, where you want to go as an individual, where you want your career to go. Maybe there's a skill on the horizon or a set of skills that you're looking to uh, to do. So give me a shout in the comments right now, especially if you're on LinkedIn. Let me know who you are, where you're tuning in from, and just answer that quick icebreaker, right? What is a new skill that you learned? What's an existing skill that you're looking to level up? Or what's a skill that you're looking to learn on the horizon? Um, I'll give you a, kind of a useless one. Well, maybe not useless, but I cracked my phone for the first time in 20 years. So I've had a cell phone for 20 years now. Um, and I just cracked it for the first time about a week and a half ago. Now, I did a little research. I could have spent like $175, $200 to go have someone fix it myself. But you know what? I got a replacement screen, got some tools, and I managed to do it myself. So brand new skill. So if anyone cracks their phone, uh, give me a shout. If you're in the Philadelphia area, I'll be happy to do it. Take a little cut off the top. Uh, I'll, I'll promise to give you a good deal. Just mention TXL. Um, so give me a shout in the comments. Let me know who you are, where you're from, and uh, you can give a quick uh, answer to that icebreaker question. So again, today we're going to be talking all about learning, upskilling, employee engagement. Uh, we have an amazing episode today. Uh, we're living in a topsy-turvy world. I don't need to tell you that. You already know it, right? So if you think about what it takes to build a culture of learning in today's environment, when you think about all the macro and micro complexities that are happening in where we work, how we work, where we learn, how we learn, uh, it's very challenging, uh, very difficult, right? So there's a lot that goes into it. So we wanted to dive deep into learning and development. We wanted to learn what is the latest and greatest? What are the trends? What are the challenges today? So we turned to one of our best partners. Uh, so we reached out to Todd Tauber, 
Uh, Todd is the SVP of strategy at Degreed. Uh, and he's going to join us today to really break down his recent research on this topic, right? In this space, he's an expert in learning development. And he's going to share the four conditions that can help organizations build a learning culture that drives your employees and your business forward. So without any further delay, let's run today's episode with Todd. Uh, it, this is a live episode, so we're going to do a pre-recorded clip today. Uh, me and Todd sat down and had an amazing conversation last week. So we're going to roll that clip, but this is live. I'm here. Give me a shout in the comments. I'll be in there too. Uh, if you have any questions for Todd or for us, let us know. Uh, we will definitely get those questions answered. So let's roll this clip. Uh, it's going to be a great episode. Todd, how are you today? Good. Thanks for having me, Tom. So I, I'm excited for this conversation. Uh, again, we're kind of kicking off this employee experience series here at uh, Phenom with Town Experience Live and learning and development is kind of such a critical component of the employee experience. So before we jump into it and jump into our conversation, I'm just curious, you know, if you could tell the audience kind of who you are and, and what do you do at Degreed? I know that's always a hard answer to ask. Many people do many things, uh, but if you can give it the quick uh, elevator pitch for who you are and what you do at Degreed. Sure. Um, so uh, I've been at Degreed for about seven and a half years now. My current role is Senior Vice President of Strategy. So a lot of what I'm doing is working with our product leadership uh, and our customers to literally define, write down the uh, sort of product strategy for Degreed, right? Defining what our future product looks like. Um, real quick before we jump into it. So Degreed is a partner of Phenom you know, here here uh, at Phenom and, and Degreed is one of our absolute favorite kind of learning experience and upskilling platforms uh, that, that you can find today. Uh, but for anybody who's not familiar with Degreed, uh, because we are very familiar with Degreed, uh, what's your elevator pitch for Degreed? Uh, where do you see yourselves in, in the market and how do you solve customer problems today? Yeah, um, Degreed is a, a learning platform. Uh, what I think is different about Degreed is sort of two main things. One is that uh, the product itself is focused, like you said, on upskilling. Uh, it is designed uh, and engineered to help people develop the skills that they need next to advance and progress their careers. The other thing that's different about Degreed is upskilling is a little bit different than the traditional world of training. And it's transformation work uh, that we sort of fit inside in many cases. And that means that our clients need lots of support to drive change. And so the other big thing that's different about Degreed is that we have a significant client service organization that helps clients to plan for and manage that change. And I know we're going to touch on that in this conversation, just this idea of transforming the mentality of, of learning, that it's not just training, right? Upskilling is not just traditional training. We'll, we'll jump into that. Uh, but before we really get into it, one of the questions we always ask on Town Experience Live is kind of how, how did you get into your line of work? Uh, we have a lot of HR leaders and we always say, you know, it's it's always funny to think like I didn't always grow up wanting to get in HR. You know, most people don't, but they find, they find themselves on some interesting paths. And yeah. you've had a pretty awesome kind of career progression. Uh, I've noticed you were at The Economist. Uh, you were at Deloitte's. Uh, spent some time on the, on the product marketing side at Degreed. Um, so how did you find your path kind of leading to, to learning and development? Has, has it always been a passion of yours? Um, I, I mean, I would consider myself a lifelong learner, for sure. Um, I landed at The Economist because I love to read. Sure. Um, and uh, my job there, though, was on the business side. I worked for the CFO, managing M&A transactions, buying other businesses for the company. And we got to the end of a cycle, had just uh, done a big deal and needed to digest that for a little while. So I needed to find another way to look busy. And they paired me up with our CMO to go look at new product development opportunities. And if you know anything about the Economist brand, the idea of putting the word learning or education next to the red box logo, it's not a big mental leap. Sure. Um, it was my job to kind of figure out what the business is there. And so I had an opportunity to build a learning program working with a bunch of vendors from the industry uh, and just got really curious about what was happening in uh, L&D. I saw uh, the beginning of a lot of change uh, and that got me really excited. 
Yeah. And, and it's, it, as you know, it's changed so much probably since then, right? It's evolved. The industry has evolved so much since then. And uh, we are definitely convinced here at, at Phenom that employee engagement and, and learning and development you know, kind of commingling with that, it's so critical and kind of building up your ability to be resilient and agile as an organization. So, you know, a couple of years ago when I would hear talent agility, uh, it really felt like kind of a, a marketing buzzword to me, but now I'm starting to see it really come to fruition and being a real thing, uh, talent resiliency. Um, so whether, you know, if you're in the audience today, if you're in talent acquisition, talent management, uh, if you're in learning and development, you know, we really believe that everybody has this mutual stake in helping employees evolve and grow because of the tangible benefits that we're, we're seeing, you know, kind of trickle up to the business. And as, as you know, Todd, and, and kind of, I, I had a chance to look through your report and your, your work, uh, it's much easier said than done, right? So we are so excited to have you on board today, kind of so we can tap into your expertise and really dive into that recent research that you did. So the report was uh, how the workforce learns um, can you just walk us through before we get started, kind of the basis for your research, who you surveyed and how this came about? Sure. Um, so the the idea behind the re research is people don't value what they don't see. And when people think about learning in the context of work, we're conditioned to think about training, right? An educational experience, um, a teacher in front of a, a class or a course, you know, in, in on a screen, and the sort of big insight that that led to the creation of Degree, right? And the fundamental difference between Degree and a lot of other learning products out there is the recognition that a lot of what people do and the way that they do it on a more consistent, every day, every week basis, habitually, uh, to develop themselves is through things like reading and watching videos and listening to podcasts and connecting with communities, right? That's the sort of, we call that everyday learning. Uh, and that experience was largely missing from L and D. So that's what degree brings to, to the table there. Yeah. And I, I love that kind of the idea of, of people don't value what they can't see. Um, yeah. There's a lot of conversation happening right now around skills technology and kind of this emerging, you know, category of everyone really diving deep into skills. Uh, do you think that push has been kind of burst out of that? You know, because a lot of it is is really around visibility, right? Visibility of skills. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, you know, by the way, just to finish off answering your question, the idea behind sure. the research yeah. is to help people understand the value of that kind of learning. Yeah. Right. Because uh, learning and development teams, like talent acquisition teams, like talent management teams, especially right now are always under pressure to do more with less, do it faster, do it better, do it cheaper, right? Um, and one of the ways that they're doing that is by uh, leaning on culture, right? They wanna get more people to sort of self-develop uh, organically as a way to build organizational culture and connections between people. But when we ask people to describe what they mean by culture, a learning culture, and to define what they're looking for in terms of benefits, they struggle a lot. So we do this research to better understand learning culture, right? Because the, the definition of the word culture literally is shared values and behaviors. So all we're really looking at is the shared values and behaviors around learning in at the workplace. Um, but so often when you think about the way training happens, um, that bottom up perspective is missing, right? You can't have a culture if you don't understand the people you're building, sharing the values and behaviors with. So that's what the research is really about. When you see companies kind of struggle to develop that that culture, um, those shared values around learning specifically, uh, do you see any like common themes around barriers that are keeping companies from really getting to where they want to be in terms of building that positive culture? There's three big ones that come sure. up all the time, right? time, money, um, which are the obvious ones, but also mindsets. Yep. If people are conditioned to think about training as the solution and training is not always the solution. Sometimes it's performance support in the moment. Um, sometimes it's redesigning work or redesigning the organization, right? Um, there's other ways to sort of solve performance issues in the workplace. Um, and getting people to sort of recognize the value of those kinds of experiences as well as 
um, getting people to sort of acknowledge the necessity to every once in a while spend some time and money investing in developing new, bigger capabilities for the longer term. Sure. Um, right. Those are the sort of cultural mindsets we need to get around. Um, but a lot of it comes down to this conversation around culture, right? Because if we're not defining culture precisely, it's very hard to define for people the change you're trying to make. But if you can describe the culture in really precise terms, right, what are the behaviors that are positive and negative, um, then you can start to track your transformation. Sure. Yeah. And a lot of this is is really broken down well in the report. So for anybody who's listening, we'll make sure we drop a link to the report in, in the notes for this uh, and in the comments on LinkedIn so that you can get access to it because it goes deep uh, into all of these topics. Um, you know, you kind of mentioned time and money. Uh, you also mentioned thematically, right? Uh, doing more with less, finding ways to get the job done cheaper, faster, better. Uh, learning and having a positive learning culture can unlock a lot of this. But from a kind of more tangible perspective, you know, what does this look like, you know, cheaper, faster, better? What does that look like in the learning and development uh, space for, for you? Yeah, I think about it through the lens of the work that our customers yep. do. Sure. Right? Um, and so when it comes to the way that they do their jobs, they're spending more time looking for technology, technology based solutions and putting together technology based solutions than they used to. And that means doing things like integrating systems and data. It means things like analyzing data and insights. It means um, curating experiences, not just creating and delivering content themselves, right? And it also means creating connections between people and other people or opportunities. And so the job of, of our customers is getting stretched and they need new tools to do some of these new things. The other thing that it means is they're starting to share that load with others, right? With individuals through the sort of core value proposition of Degreed, empower people to sort of take more control of their development, but increasingly by collaborating with teams in operations. So for example, we have clients working with their DEIB teams to curate plans and pathways in Degreed to drive awareness of um, inclusion initiatives and things like that. From a product perspective, so my 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 previous mentality around learning and development has always been training, right? Because that's kind of what I was indoctrinated with as an employee, right? And we had our learning development teams, and that's what they did, right? They brought in external trainers. They would come in. It would be either be in person, or we get access to some online course or something like that, some certification. Um, and I think a lot of people still have that mentality, that feeling. Um, is there anything that you're doing in degree, you know, either, you know, from the uh, kind of uh, services perspective or the product perspective to really break down that mentality and kind of help transform the thinking a bit uh, for your end users and for your customers? I mean, it's, it's everything we do. It's our business. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Our customers come to Degreed, right? And they choose Degreed instead of more traditional learning solutions. Sure because they wanna change the way that their teams operate. Um, so it's a combination of product and service, right? It's creation and innovation around features that enable them to do some of these things in new and different ways. Um, the idea of building you know, a playlist of learning that you do collaboratively with individuals or with subject experts you know, at the same time is, pretty novel, right? And yeah. our clients are finding a lot of speed and scale as a result of functionality like that. At the same time, they're trying to do new and different things that many of them haven't done before. And so we have both a client service team for sort of the everyday um, needs and to help clients migrate from sort of our basic solutions to our more advanced solutions. But then we also have a professional services team that goes uh, sort of step above. Uh, helping out with things like change management strategies, um, staff augmentation, other things to sort of you know make the change happen. Yeah, yeah, and and I think a lot of it helps support the mindset shifts, right? You know, as as you're starting to build those shared values, build that culture. And in the study in the report, uh, what I really want to get into with you is is these four conditions, right? So you mapped out four specific conditions for creating a positive learning culture. 
And I wanted to quickly walk through these because I think, you know, if, if anything, uh, if, if you download the report and I recommend everyone check it out, um, all of these have key takeaways within them. Um, yeah. So the first condition uh, is learning is guided by opportunities, not by, just by requests, right? And I understood this as, you know, learning opportunities, uh, really tying learning opportunities to in-demand skills, the things that are going to provide immediate benefit to the business and really solve immediate business problems. Um, is that, did I get that right? And, you know, can you break that one down for us? That's basically it in a nutshell, right? We're just yeah, trying sure. to be clever with copywriting. No, um, I like it. The, uh, but the, the point there is this isn't the way that training and even L&D is sort of typically done, right? A lot of the budget, a lot of the time in learning and development functions goes into stuff that's programmed in advance. Right. We know we're going to hire 2000 people next year, so we have to do onboarding. We know we need 500 extra leaders and managers every year. And so we have to run these programs. Right. And that stuff consumes a huge chunk of the mind space as well as the organizational resources in learning in many organizations. Um, and so they rely on traditional approaches in most cases. Uh, other than onboarding and compliance, there's not a lot that reaches sort of everybody, right? Because beyond a bunch of major programs that we know are sort of high value, high leverage across the business, you know, leadership skills, communication skills, project management skills, things like that. There's not a lot, there's not a lot of commonality. There's a long tail of individualized needs. And that's where a solution like ours is, is, is useful sometimes. But um, in order to get individuals to sort of take action and take learning on themselves in a productive way, right? Not just randomly, you know, learning about things they're curious about, but learning about things that they're curious about that can also have a benefit to the business. We literally try to line up for them the learning resources to the opportunities. Yeah. And so the idea is to help them see what skills are in demand for opportunities, jobs, projects in your organization, um, and what are the learning opportunities that match that. Yeah. And I can imagine the necessity of that is only has only been amplified over the past couple of years and, and continues to be amplified when we think about uh, kind of the, you know, impending recession that everyone keeps talking about, but not just the recession and kind of the economic uh elements but you know we even see too with you know organizations that make a pledge to go green by 2025 well what does that look like right you might have to change you know manufacturing processes for thousands of people who will have to learn new skills they're going to have to adopt new skills in order for the business to meet that pledge right or the introduction of a 5g technology or new technologies and all of a sudden you have thousands of employees that need to learn critical new skills to, to meet those needs. And sometimes they are planned, to your point. Sometimes they, uh, they're they not as planned, right? We're responding to changes that uh, are outside of many people's control. Um, so have you seen that? Like, have you seen organizations really need to, uh, not from a desire to be proactive, but from necessity, shift to a more kind of... Uh, uh, forward thinking mindset, you know, with, with how they're able to deploy training. And 100%. Yeah. Okay. I think, um, you know, necessity is the mother of invention in this particular case, because for I've sure. been in this business for like 15 years, I've been talking about the kind of shift to digital learning for a long time, but up until 2019, there were still a lot of companies doing a lot of training live in person. And while a lot of that will bounce back as people start to gravitate back to um, some equilibrium in terms of office occupancy um, and, and factory occupancy, um, it's never going to get back to that kind of high water mark from, from before, probably. And so um, what they're looking for is a way to sort of steer culture in a large sense to sort of build this pipeline of people that are ready for those big shifts. Um, you know, sort of in practice and learning fit for, you know, for change, have the foundational skills so that when those sudden changes happen, you know, suddenly two, three years ago, cybersecurity <clears throat> breaches start spiking and everybody wants the same, you know, pool of 50,000 people. Sure. Now we've got to figure out a way to, we, we can't hire all these people. Now we've got to figure out a way to, to build that pipeline. 
And I think that's the sort of ground level view of all of this chatter you hear about skills based talent management, skills based, you know, uh, HR. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is where, you know, here at Phenom, we love our partnership with Degreed because we have a lot of folks in our audience. Um, who are heavily invested in internal mobility and talent mobility. And, and a lot of it has to do with those kind of on the fly shifts, you know, to we're opening a lot of new roles and it is easier to source from within an upskill and more cost effective than to uh, go external uh, in many cases. Right. And I think it's, it's great to be able to see that kind of symbiotic relationship with internal sourcing and internal mobility and having all the tools available through the partnership, you know, to make sure um, that they're getting kind of the traditional learning, the experiential learning and the upskilling that they need to kind of see that through. Um, the second condition, which uh, we've already kind of touched on, but, you know, skills are built at work every day, not just in training once in a while, really that shift, you know, from the more traditional sense that that I, I was kind of brought up on. Um, what are some of your most notable or kind of favorite non-traditional kind of, you know, non-training, uh, you know, stuffy training ways, you know, that business have been invested uh, in learning. And if there's any specific use cases that that you've really taken to over the past couple of years. Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, I don't want to take anything away from classes and courses and structured programs. Totally. Yep. There's a lot of value there, right? Sometimes you need those transformational experiences. Sometimes you need to make the effort and and, and lean in hard, right? Um, but on the everyday basis, I think what a lot of that gets missed, um, yes, there's a lot, I think, of value in incremental bits of content that accumulate into bigger things. Um, that's our kind of core value proposition. But I actually think that for me personally, the most valuable form of sort of non-obvious learning is work experience, right? I make mistakes every day. I run into problems every day and have to figure out solutions. And so it's the experience of trial and error, reflection, talking to other people to try to figure it out, trying to mimic or follow other people. Um, you don't need to make time for that stuff. That's the stuff that just happens, right? What you need to do is sort of acknowledge that that's learning and figure out a way to make that happen more intentionally so that you can advance towards your, your goals, right? That's what I think is, um, is sort of missing from the definition in a lot of cases. Yeah. And... Um... From a product perspective, you know, what are some ways that you've kind of been able to build kind of that user ad adoption, right? And making sure that users feel that day to day. Um, do you have anything in the product that you're really excited about, you know, that helps users uh, get energized, you know, about some of that that day to day learning that happens? There's a few things. Um, number one, one thing that's different about Degreed is the control that we give to our users. So if you look at most learning platforms these days, you see a grid of content cards, just, you know, everybody yep. trying to copy what Netflix looks like. That part of the UI is a commodity. It looks basically the same on every product because that's what customers expect now, right? So the magic is what you can do with those cards, what experiences are sort of connected behind them. Um, and uh, so we give users control over that real estate in a way that I don't think a lot of other products do. Awesome. Right? You can uh, select what we call focus skills, for example. These are the things that I want to work on right now. I might have 30 skills attached to my role, right? But I only really have time to work on a few at a time. I want to focus my attention. And by selecting those focus skills, it tweaks the algorithm, makes better recommendations that are more targeted at those things. Um, Another thing that I'm really excited about is the connections that we have to talent marketplaces like Phenom. What we've seen loud and clear is that where clients have those systems connected um, and where we have opportunities showing up in the flow of people's feeds of learning recommendations, when they can see how the learning connects to the opportunities that get them excited, they're more active in terms of learning. So they consume and complete more content they're sharing more stuff with their colleagues. So they're building the culture, they're promoting learning. Um, and they also volunteer more information about themselves, information about the skills they believe they have, at what level they think they have them, uh, but also what they're interested in learning next, right? So it's not just looking backward, but also an opportunity to look forward and see who's sort of making progress towards some of those goals. So there's a few things in the product that I think uh, do what you're talking about. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I love it. And it's great to be able to connect those dots, right? And understand that when I acquire these skills, it, it's going to help me in a real tangible way, you know, and that could, and it's, it's sometimes it's more than just kind of comp, you know, and more than just pay and more than just recognition, right? It's just understanding how uh, these skills that I'm going to get from, you know, these folk, these focus skills, you know, that I'm going to get from these degree uh, opportunities are going to push me in the direction that I'm trying to go in and being able to visibly see that and kind of feel that I think goes a long way for sure. So jumping into the third condition, uh, and I really appreciated this one, um, and I wanted to get your your thoughts on this. So it is developing people is everyone's job, not just L and D's job, right? And and again, kind of me going back to my own work experience, I've always thought about uh, team development and workforce development be, being housed with kind of that subset of the HR team, right? The learning and development team, and that was their job, uh, and they would put together these programs to help us get to certain places. Um, and occasionally I would feel like my manager was somewhat invested where my manager would kind of say, Hey, you know, if you see a course that you want to take, let me know. And, and we'll see if we have budget for that. Like that's kind of how the relationship has always been. Uh, but I definitely feel like in the kind of economic climate that we're dipping into, um, there's an added stress, you know, to protect my role, to protect my budget, you know, protect my headcount, protect my job. Um, and I, that's not going to fly, right, in a positive learning culture, right? I, I think that's going to only create a climate where we're not invested in each other's learning. So I think this idea of kind of being invested in team-wide upskilling and reskilling, it, it's going to have a positive benefit on the whole business. So I guess for all of the folks who aren't in learning and development who are listening today, how can we become better allies for the learning and development professionals and be more invested kind of in in everyone's development yeah i mean my understanding is your audience is primarily talent acquisition and talent management yep. folks so um you know and that's sort of the bookends for uh, a lot of the the learning for activity sure. um i think the common thread that runs through all three th of those things is employer brand um employer brand is everybody's job just like building the the company's brand is is everybody's job right um but if you break it down um into the sort of employee life cycle model of attract, develop, retain, right? If you think about it, what does every job ad ever promise? Um, we're going to make you better off, right? We're going to grow your career. We're going to help you make money, grow your income, put you on the career path, right? Why do people take jobs? If you look at the McKinsey or the Gallup data, top five reasons, um, not explicitly about learning, but they're all about how learning can help you become better off make more money, um, get access to better opportunities, et cetera. And then when you look at why people are leaving right now, the most recent data I've seen is the McKinsey survey. Um, same top five reasons as the reasons people are choosing those jobs, right? So they're choosing jobs because they want to become better off, which is what we're promising. And when we don't deliver in some way, meaning, you know, meaningful to them, they leave, right? And it's, it's that 20% sure. of people that's kind of consistently churning right now. So those three functions, I think, uh, talent acquisition, talent management, learning and development, all kind of own a piece of that problem together. But what I see is there's not a lot of collaboration across those functions in many organizations, right? So I think it starts with just talking to colleagues and finding out what are you working on? What are we working on? Finding areas like that of shared ownership. Nobody right now needs one more thing to do Sure. If your company is struggling with recruiting and you need or your company is going to be going through layoffs and you need to bolster your employee brand. You should all be talking about how you can all contribute to the solution to that problem. Yeah, I really like the way you framed it, you know, kind of delivering on that promise, you know, that initial promise that every career site attempts to make, you know, of painting the picture of what your future will look like at X company. Yeah. Um, and I, I do think it's a good way to frame it for talent acquisition uh, professionals as well, because one of the things that we've seen over the past couple of years trending upwards that have been really effective at, at converting uh, job seekers and candidates is, is employee testimonial videos on the career site, right? So when you can get employees talking about their experience positively and helping the candidates see themselves in the role, see themselves at the organization. Again, all employer branding, you know, as, as you mentioned, um, it's incredibly powerful. And, and if you can get them specifically talking about the growth opportunities, the learning opportunities, the mentorships, you know, like I think those 
will go a long way, right? And they have to be authentic, you know, and if you can get them writing on Glassdoor and doing all the things that, you know, your employer branding folks want you want to see, uh, oh. when they can incorporate, you know, uh, that your organization is invested in, in the growth and the evolution and the forward momentum of the employee, it goes such a long way. So I really like the way you frame that. I appreciate that. Um, the final condition. Uh, everybody can take on new challenges, not just somebody's. And I thought that, again, like these last two, I really kind of gravitated towards, you know, at Phenom, uh, as I mentioned, we're heavily invested in internal mobility uh, and really doing it in such a way that equity and inclusion is built into the DNA, kind of in, is built into the into the process. And everybody has the same visibility uh, and access to new opportunities. And it seems like the stepping stone for this is really learning and development, right? Because it's it's more than just being able to see what opportunities are available to you. Uh, it's making sure that you have access to the opportunities to grow and evolve the skills that will make you qualified, right? F to make that jump, to make that move. Yeah. Um, and are you seeing this too? Like, are you seeing learning and development professionals and kind of a learning and development space uh, really connecting the dots to career progression? Learning talent acquisition and talent management. Yeah, all of them. Yep. Um, because I think what they're seeing is um, there's a couple of big differences, like I said earlier, between sort of the way we've thought about training historically and, and what we're talking about when we say upskilling today. One of them is we're starting to look forward, not backwards, like you described earlier, right? Connecting it to opportunities, not reacting to sure. problems. Um, you need to do both, right? But the balance is is a little bit different. Another one here is we're conditioned to think about um, the rewards for learning as either more money or a new job, right? And those are big jumps, right? And they happen, but they don't happen every day. And there's sort of well-established psychological theory called the progress principle. People continue to make progress and stay motivated when they see small gains consistently, right? And so if you think about promotions, new jobs, um, major sort of milestones of recognition as the uh, risers on a staircase, I think the learning is the the treads, right? It's how sure. you get to the next level. Um, and the more learning you can have happening and the more intentional it can be and the better aligned it is with your strategy and your workforce strategy, um, the better, right? So the benefits that we're seeing are when clients are using Degreed, for example, with um, a talent marketplace, they're not just using it to connect people to jobs. They're also connecting people to other people for things like mentoring assignments. Sure. And when you talk to those people, right, different experiences have different benefits. But when you talk to the people that have gone through these mentoring experiences, what they're getting out of it is they feel more confident. They feel like they're gaining allies and sponsors. They're building out their network um, and their reputations which are the things that help you get noticed and get through the sort of hurdles of those opportunities. Um, and as a result of that, the organizations are seeing better retention and better engagement and things like that, right? Yeah. It's because people are feeling those incremental gains. Those are good enough too. Not always, right? And, and every now and then people expect the big cupcake at the end of the carrots. Sure. But, um, <laughs> but the idea is that you want to start thinking about yeah. progress more incrementally. Yeah, no, I, I I love that. And I love the visual of the cupcake at the end of the carrot. <laughs> I might steal that for, for a future use, Todd. Um, so we have a few last, you know, final questions as we start to wrap things up. Uh, really appreciate, you know, all your insights so far. Uh, and again, as a reminder, if you're just tuning in, um, a lot of this is covered in a report uh, that Degree puts out annually, right? You started, I, I believe I saw I one all the way years. back to 2019. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, awesome. the first one was 2016, actually. So this was the third one. Great, awesome. Yeah. So uh, the latest, uh, we will put a link in the notes here uh, so that you can check that out. If you're on LinkedIn live, uh, we'll put a link in the comments. So you can check that out as well. Um, just a few quick questions. So Todd, you mentioned, you know, you've been in this this uh, space for about 15 years. Uh, is there anything emerging that really excites you? You know, is there any 
new technology and you don't have to get into specifics with degree or anything that you guys have under wraps, right? But is there anything uh, thematically that is really exciting for you? These no, days? the big picture thing that excites me is um, I think in learning a lot of the last 10 years were about content and content is interesting. You know, we all kind of see it and feel it and touch it. Sure. But it's been commoditized largely um, and it's on its own, not enough to do what we want it to do anymore, right? People are drowning in too much content. And so what's exciting is I think the way organizations are starting to think about putting data to work through AI and ML, through integrations, right, of, of systems to create new kinds of experiences, um, automation. There's a lot of really exciting stuff happening and data is at the center of a lot of that. Um, that's what gets me excited about learning. Yeah, I, I love it. And, and we're right there with you. Uh, so many innovative things. Uh, and a, lo a lot of it is coming out of necessity, you know, as we talked about earlier, and really seeing that kind of be the mother of invention there. Um, any final thoughts, right? Anything that we didn't cover that you think would be helpful for any organizations, regardless of who's listening and their role, you know, anybody who's really trying to be mindful of building that more positive learning culture? Um, you know, I think it starts with just educating yourself, right? Um, culture is this word to me, it's like innovation or even skills. It's this word that like everybody uses all the time. And we all think we're talking about the same thing, but I don't think we're talking about the same thing in precisely sure. the same way. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the misunderstanding, a lot of the confusion that's surrounding all of us right now, um, is at the root of that. And I think the only answer to that is to educate yourself, right? Um, if you don't have answers, ask questions. Um, be curious and go go looking for for stuff. There's some really good research coming out of all the big uh, and even smaller boutique research firms right now. Red Thread and Deloitte both put out some amazing research on skills based uh, talent uh, strategies and technologies recently. Um, there's some really interesting stuff happening out there. So you know, be curious. Yeah, the the Red Thread research was great. Yeah, the the four quadrants. It was really interesting to get a deep dive into skills technology specifically. I yeah. uh, really appreciated that. Um, you've got an event coming up, uh, Degreed Vision, uh, on November 16th at 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, is there anything you can share around that event uh, that our viewers can expect? Because I'd love to, again, we'll get the link up for Degreed Vision as well so people can head on over there and, uh, again, continue learning. You know, to your point, uh, there's great resources, but great communities too. So follow Degreed on LinkedIn, follow Degreed on all the socials, uh, check out the event. But what are some of the highlights that you think people can uh, look forward to? I think the number one thing is people, um, our customers in particular, but the companies that um, are interested in potentially becoming customers are partners. Um, they all want to know what we're doing next. Um, we recently acquired a company called LearnIn. They have a, an academy builder product that's a good complement to our core learning platform. And so the point of the vision event is to tell our customers, our prospects, our partners, um, here's how we see these two things fitting together into uh, the future of how we think we can help you. So if people want to know about where Degreed is going and how we might be able to help solve their problems, um, this is the place to find out. Awesome. As a partner, I'm excited. As a product marketer, I'm excited. These types of events are always exciting for me uh, just to kind of see how other companies are executing on delivering their vision. So Degreed Vision, November 16th, 11 a.m. Eastern. We will drop the link in. Um, Todd, really appreciate your time today. Uh, this has been an awesome conversation. Uh, can't think of a better uh, partner and a better person to come join us and kind of educate us on what's uh, what's happening with learning development and ways that we can start to shift our thinking, shift our actions. Um, so we covered a lot. Uh, if you're just tuning in or you tune in midway, uh, you can head on over to phenom.com slash blog. Uh, do a quick search for degree. You'll find a recap blog post uh, in a week or so after this airs. Uh, and that post will have clips. Uh, it'll have the full recording uh, and some highlights from Todd. So Todd, thank you. Really appreciate it. Good luck with uh, Degreed Vision. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll, continue to, we'll continue to chat and maybe we can have you on a future episode if uh, some exciting things come out. Yeah, thanks very much, Tom, for having us. Look forward to seeing you soon. Awesome. Take care, Todd. Bye, everybody. Awesome.
Well, once again, that was Todd Tauber, SVP at Degreed, breaking down uh, how to build a positive learning culture uh, at your organization. Amazing conversation with Todd. I want to give a shout out to Todd and Degreed. Uh, really appreciate uh, their time kind of coming on board and, and kind of dropping some of that knowledge there, some of Todd's expertise. Uh, as mentioned in the episode, uh, they do have an event coming up, uh, Degreed Vision. So we will drop the link in the comments here uh, in just a bit so that you can check out that event. Uh, we also have a couple of blog posts from Degreed uh, that showcase the research that we discussed. So we'll drop the links in there too. Uh, on the Phenom side, we have a lot of exciting stuff coming up as well too. So we're going to continue our employee experience series uh, for Talent Experience Live throughout the month. Uh, next week, uh, we have Jorge Cazada. Uh, Jorge is the VP of People and Culture at Granite Construction, uh, doing some amazing things there, uh, fostering diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And he's going to talk uh, all about how we can really plant the seeds, how we can really get started being very intentional with inclusion at our organizations. Uh, so that's going to be a great conversation next Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern right here on LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube. Make sure you subscribe so that you can catch up with us and uh, be a part of that conversation next week. The following week, uh, not on Thursday, which is Thanksgiving here in the US, but on Tuesday, we have a very special event. Uh, so this is going to be called Experience Phenom Talent Marketplace. We're going to be having some of our phenoms here uh, on the strategy side and on the product side really break down some of the innovative solutions that we've been building here at Phenom to help you engage, develop, and retain your employees. So we're going to dive deep into the product. So if you're interested uh, in what we're doing here at Phenom, uh, you're not going to want to miss this. Uh, so we will put the link in the comments for that as well. We'd love to have everyone joining us for Experience Phenom Talent Marketplace on uh, Tuesday, November 22nd. Uh, so that's going to be about a 90 minute event. But if you subscribe, if you subscribe, you'll be able to watch uh, on demand. Uh, but I want to thank you so much for joining this episode. Uh, we will have a blog recap with uh, a lot of the clips, a lot of the highlights, and all of the links uh, in the show notes for that recap uh, coming up soon on phenom.com. So thank you so much for your time, your attention, your comments. I saw Devin Foster, uh, my co-conspirator here on Down Experience Live, uh, chiming in on the comments, uh, loving this episode as well too. So hope you enjoyed this one, and we will catch you on the next one. Oh,